is that the bell in the chapel rings once for every year that the school has been in existence. So if you were listening, if you were keeping count, it did ring 117 times as the seniors processed over from the chapel service. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh, eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, and especially Christ School, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, and welcome to the 2017 graduation ceremony. Some quick housekeeping, if you have a cell phone, feel free to take pictures or videos, but uh, do not take an incoming call. Uh, please turn off the sound. Additionally, after the ceremony, the, uh, in the outdoor tent located at the entrance, uh, there will be a photographer that is hired that will take pictures of you and your son and family. Please take advantage of that. And for seniors and their immediate family, the dining hall will be open uh, for a short um, tea and crumpets, if you will. So feel free. An underclassman asked me earlier this month how we chose the senior graduation speaker. Good question. The selection process is not a complicated one. Seniors apply. The list is then vetted by the administration. And finally, the senior class votes. The chosen one usually is an interesting but an entirely appropriate cross-section of the class. He is, in economic terms, the equilibrium point. This year's senior graduation speaker is Frank Duranja, a four-year student from Raleigh. Frank is a fine student and a productive member of our swim team and is now a member of our newly crowned state championship lacrosse team. Frank has a calm demeanor and chooses not to be the center of attention. But that come, becomes questionable at any Christ School basketball game. Frank's game time Liberace type wardrobe includes simply a very small Speedo and a cape, which he will address during his remarks. Last week, I looked back at Frank's 2013 application to Christ School and he lists himself at a whopping five foot two, 105 pounds. Frank's uh, also listed on his application that his top interests were swimming and lacrosse, and his least favorite interest, number 25 out of the 25 choices we give you on the application, was public speaking. <laughs> How ironic, given that today we find him as our senior speaker, Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Duranja. Good morning. Good morning. I have a confession to make. This confession is a big one a secret that I reluctantly share with you. Okay, here it is. I have no idea how to give a commencement speech. <laughs> Since a few of you in the crowd might not know me, I decided I should share some quick facts about myself. My name is Frank Stephen Duranje III. My greatest accomplishments to date are scoring during a varsity lacrosse game and being banned from sporting events because I showed up wearing a Speedo. No, I am not the valedictorian, but I did get a 100 on a quiz in Mr. Harris's class during my <laughs> sophomore year, so I think that's close enough. <laughs> Typically, when I'm speaking in front of crowds, the administration is a little on edge that I might say something shocking. But don't worry, they made me put on a shirt for this occasion, and I haven't watched Rocky IV recently. 
I must address another shortcoming in my life. I often view the world from the perspective of a cynic. Perhaps this is because I've been strongly influenced by my favorite author, Hunter S. Thompson, or because I love movies with sad endings. Either way, I can find myself looking at the world from a negative perspective. I see a world that has turned society into numbers. This practice begins in middle school, but is perfected by high school, where students become an SAT score or a GPA. And our social status might be based on the number of followers we have on Instagram. Then we move to the real world, where we might be judged by the number in our bank account. And we are determined apt for tasks by the number of degrees that we have framed on our office wall. There is a sense of dread that we will never be able to live a successful life because of the numbers that we may choose to define us. Christ School has taken my idea of the world and completely shattered it. Here, no person is left behind because he has a troubled past. This institution places faith that its pillars will mold a young adult into a man. Many schools write off the students who experience speed bumps during their teenage years. Christ School uses these obstacles as, a, as an opportunity to provide necessary growth. It does not matter how you begin your career at Christ School because at the end you will emerge an entirely changed person. Individuality is treasured amongst the community here. Everybody brings his own contributions to the table and no contribution is seen as greater than others. At Christ School, you are a living person with dreams and goals, not a sentient creature that is just a group of digits. Life is not about dwelling on your failures. Life is about finding joy in your successes. In my 18 years, I have failed way too many times to count. I applied to five colleges and was denied by three of them. I have failed plenty of tests. I've been unable to lift certain weights, but these are all things that I have learned from. I learned that victory is the sweetest elixir mankind can taste. I learned that I can love a school I would have never considered. And I learned that if I put my heart and soul into a class, I will get an A. And I learned that the harder I work, the lighter the weights get. Even if I never enjoy it, I'm no longer afraid of failure. Christ School prides itself on taking boys from all backgrounds and molding them into model citizens. The lessons we learn in art in North Carolina are the ideals that we will live by for the rest of our life. Here, you will always cherish being the underdog and fighting to receive recognition. These are the most important years of our lives. They will determine the future that we lead. They build a person that can make an impact on the world. So please allow me to reiterate a point that I made during my senior speech. A man who does not feel emotion is a weak man. A man who refuses to strive for greatness is a weak man. A man who sees others with disdain is a weak man. A man who treats the world as his ashtray is a weak man. Christ School provides you with the transition to boy, from boyhood to manhood. You have to make the decisions that will make you a strong man. To the class of 2017, I suspect I speak for all of us when I say that you guys are my best friends in the entire world. I would be nothing without the relationships that I've made throughout the past four years. I wish you all the best in future endeavors. The memories we have made are forever locked in my heart. When we all depart today from 500 Christ School Road, know that it is not goodbye forever. Endings are just new beginnings, and I'm sure we will all turn out okay. I would like to end this speech with a quote from Winnie the Pooh. And uh, if you see me crying later, know that it is because leaving Christ School is like ripping my heart out. All right, here we go. How lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Thank you, God bless, and roll green.
For 15 years, James Euler has been helping Christ School boys grow into gentlemen. True to our mission, which focus on, focuses on developing character, spirit, and body, as well as the mind, Mr. Euler's classroom extends with him wherever he goes. When he's coaching, he's teaching. When he's working on dorm, he's teaching. When he leads the summer work crew, he's teaching. One of our loudest teachers, Mr. Euler's voice can stop a boy in his tracks from across the baseball field. He has a way of, letting, of getting a boy's attention and letting him know exactly what's expected of him. He encourages students to engage in thoughtful discourse and an unflinching examination of their assumptions. As director of the eighth grade program, Mr. Euler has shepherded our youngest students through those awkward and sometimes difficult periods of adjustment to a new school and community away from home. Students know how much he cares about them, and it is fitting that they have voted him as their Teacher of the Year for 2016-17. I am delighted to introduce him to you today to deliver the commencement address, Mr. James Euler. Welcome everyone to the best day to be a teacher <laughs> and a pretty good day to be a parent too. Thank you, Mr. Maurer. I guess you get to enjoy both today. First of all, I want to thank the student body for bestowing the honor of addressing you today, but most particularly you, the class of 2017. While I've had the pleasure of teaching, coaching, house, parent, house parenting, or advising nearly all of you at some point, those titles do not do justice to the true relationships we have built. My utmost gratitude goes to all the unofficial roles you have allowed me to play in your time here. Thank you for fun on the summer work crew, for the sarcasm while parking cars, for being a brand model for the Wellington Baker line of clothing, for sharing on the swim team bus the smartest of conversations about the stupidest of topics for playing peekaboo with me in chapel, for serving as a faculty advisor to the Bad Catholics Club, for games of... <laughs> but most importantly, for allowing me to be a good neighbor, a mentor, a father figure, and letting an aging man still feel like a big brother. I am also eternally grateful to three others, to Stella and Colin, Thanks for always pointing out to me the joys and beauties of this campus while reminding me that there is more to life than Christ School. And most importantly to my wife, Becky, thanks for partnering with me to create a life better than the younger version of me always wished I would have. I love you all dearly. It was about a week before my 18th birthday, and I had wedged myself between the bars of a metal contraption atop a cab of an open back cargo truck, not too different from the school's big red one. Any discomfort from my makeshift seat was tolerable, given my perch would offer me a bird's eye view of the countryside of Jamaica as our, as our group embarked on a two hour trek from the mission houses of the Brothers of the Poor in the slums of Kingston to the lush beach at Duns River Falls. I snapped this photo of myself in my summited position. One today would refer to this as a selfie. Now I clearly recall this photo's sole purpose in my 17-year-old mind. Proof to mom and dad about the totally dingbat adventure I had created for myself on my first adventure outside of their house and outside of the country. However, this photo has come to take on a far different meaning over the 25 years since its capture. While yes, it makes me nostalgic for the, youth, the youthful svelte version of myself, a head full of curls flowing in the wind, finally free of the confined links of Catholic school uniform codes. But at a glance, this photo reminds me of my true north, my moral compass, my values, idealism, and dreams of a boy just beginning to germinate and plant the roots of the man I currently am. Today, when I look at this photo of myself just a few months beyond where our graduates sit today, I wonder, what would I say to a conversation with this guy? You freaking moron, what are you doing on top of that truck in a country where drivers readily turn a two-lane road into five lanes of traffic? Never mind. You're right. 
Peering over the edge of those cliffs offered you sights of beauty your buddies in the back of the truck never got to see. But yeah, you're still a moron. But you're right. It makes the adventure far more worthwhile when you are one. But seriously, now I'm 25 years older. I have far more to life, I have far more of the life than you ever hoped to create for me. I know I am the man you always hoped you would become. I know unconditional love is when you are holding and rocking your two-year-old child, trying to help them find comfort from the flu, knowing at any moment you'll be puked on again, and in two to five days that same bug will wreak havoc on your own body, but it'll all be worth it if your baby will just sleep for the night. These things I can explain to you, but it's truly not going to make sense. You will have to learn them on your own. But cherish what you are contemplating right now, because aside from your future wife and kids, nothing is going to help define who you are becoming more than this two-week service trip in Jamaica. A few days ago, you cleared the rubble from a burned-down home in the slums. You and your buddies loaded it up in a truck and hauled it to the dump. Yeah, in your head, you thought, I bet there are people living off that dump. But when you pulled off the main road and drove for miles and miles and miles, and nothing eventually, and there was nothing there, eventually arriving at the dump to the fearful greeting of 15 or so residents who hopped in the back of that moving truck, hoping to scavenge something of value, you realize they never left that dump. It was their lifeline. Later that night, in discussions with your buddies, you began to realize the limits of the conservative faith in the free market to solve problems, while also pointing out the dangers of a liberalism that assumed these were lesser people and you were supposed to fix them and bring them to be more like you. While philosophies make great labels and define sides, if you truly want to create a better world, you will have to move beyond the dichotomies of politics, accept that no side has a monopoly on correct answers, and move toward a multifaceted, pragmatic approach to build a better society. After all, we are all human beings, not political agendas. In the days that followed, you rebuilt that house. Eventually, you had worked yourself to exhaustion, and you asked if you could rest your body for a day and work at the school. Yeah, you're a complete idiot to think that teaching would be something restful. The boys didn't want to pay attention to the math lesson, but somehow your goofy behavior, movement around the room, and varied one-on-one -on -one engagement kept them on task. You know, younger James, maybe you should look into that teaching thing. Finally, listen, you dumb punk, you don't realize this yet, but these two weeks on this island, living off a diet of rice and the occasional tasty beef patty, will mean so much to you later on in life, because you are waking up every day to serve others. And you are doing it with some of your best of friends. And if you find a way to wake up each day with the purpose of making your little corner of the world a better place, you will find true happiness. But the reality is, the journey to Jamaica or anywhere else does not matter as much as the people with whom you share it. That trip to Jamaica was the commencement of my adult life. Formerly seniors, today is yours. We often think of, to, of today's events as the end, but, graduate, but the graduation ceremony is called commencement. Commence, to begin. To be, today begins your new journey. You will leave here to find your Jamaicas, to define yourself, to create and build your own life. But I want you to take a moment to consider this place. You have spent two, three, four, five, or in the case of one of you, ten years wandering these hollow grounds. You loved this place. You hated this place. It trapped you. It built you. You found great success. You took two steps forward and one back. You grew. You learned who you wanted to become. You learned who you did not want to become. And in the end, you left no doubt. But look around at each other. Look at the underclassmen. The journey was important, but more so were the people with whom you shared it. Look across at your teachers. Why is this the greatest day to be a teacher? Because today, this is the beginning. Our work 
It was all preparation. Having been at Christ School for 15 years, I'm in a unique position. I can see your future through the alumni who have departed before you. Hey, Euler, I got my first real job. Mr. Euler, let me introduce you to my fiance. A text and a photo that says, look at my new puppy. Guess what, Euler, I'm gonna be a dad. But sometimes the message is not as joyous. I've picked up the phone too. Can I talk to you? I don't want to go back to college. Or even worse, my dad has died. The reality is, gentlemen, this place has been your second home for some time, and people here care about you as such. When you are lost, let Christ School be your true north, like this photo does for me. Let the place you come back to, let it be the place you come back to, to push the reset button to remember your values, to remind yourself of the man you wanted to become when you were young. So as you depart today, as we send you out to the world, you begin a new relationship with Christ School, the one where you let go, the one where we let you go. But as you leave today, as you let go of us, as you start your new adventures, as you find your Jamaicas, you will take the greeny spirit with you. And when you need us, even when you don't need us, never forget that there is someone at your Christ School home who wants to hear from you, your successes, your lives, and your journeys. So go. Go out there. Go way beyond the Shell Station. Go be a moron. <laughs> go become heroes, intellects, artists, pilots, sailors, workers, lovers, teachers, husbands, fathers, and eventually, eventually come back. Return to campus. Come see us or whoever us is. Share your adventure that begins today. We love you. Godspeed. And now for the presentation of the diplomas. First row, James Franklin Anderson. Nicholas Liam Niven Annexter. <laughs> Daniel Gabriel Beal. James Alexander Becker. <laughs> Charles Dinelli Bradshaw. Charles Randall Bollock.
Stephen Banks Campbell. Zihan Chen. <laughs> Joseph James Sinkyu. Charles Wilson Claffey. <laughs> Kokai Rashad McNair Cobb. Ethan Dunton Colburn. James Preston Coleman the Fourth. Quinn Bailey Cohn. Caden John Cruz. Patrick Kelly Cunningham. <laughs> Frank Stephen Deranja the third. Kyle Aaron Flax. <laughs> William Pless Fleming. William Seth Griswold. <laughs> Matthew Carl Halverson.
John Carter Harvey. Henry Claiborne Hawthorne the Fourth, John Lyndon Helton. James Coleman High. <laughs> William Thomas Bull Hafer. Sage Solon Holly. John Ezra Hunter. William Holden Hutto. <laughs> William Paul Iorio. Matthew Bryce Jackson. Christopher Andrew Johnson. Jacob Reed Johnson. <laughs> Sungjin Kang. Jared Alexander Letman Gash. Yeah. 
You didn't want me in it? Pani Lee. Gunner Perry Longo. David Elvaro Lopez. Morgan Alexander McDonald. Morgan Mackenzie McKay. Davis Avery Oliver. Samuel Wade Maurer. Did you get this screw up I just made? Is that, is that, is that I, I, I sure. Kelsey Douglas Peterson. John Braxton Poole. Zachary Lawrence Pulsifer. Tyler Austin Redmond. <laughs> Shinyu Ren. Michael Donovan Reynolds, Jr.
Justin Kwan Rode. Jonah Matthew Roberts. <laughs> Michael George Sanderson, Jr. Seth Franklin Scott. <laughs> Tieng Shen. John Siler Sloan. <laughs> Vincent Riley Smith. Vance Patrick Stiles. James Daniel Turley. James Walker Wild. <laughs> Nathaniel Garrett Williams. Bowen Zhang. <laughs> Junri Zhang. Give it up for the class of 2017.
Please have a seat. Before we begin the great diaspora of the class of 2017, a few acknowledgments are in order. Many people have made today possible. Many fingerprints have helped shape the class of 2017. First, in front of me are hundreds of moms, dads, grandparents, brothers, sisters who have sacrificed, loved, and have been a large part of these young men's success. I would ask that the class of 2017 stand and give a round of applause to those here in the audience today who have been there for you. Next, across from you are the men and women who have taught, coached, and mentored you. This faculty knows you well, your strengths, your weaknesses, what makes you mad, what makes you laugh. They have given tireless hours to you, they have worried about you, they have been there for you, and now they are proud of you. Let us all give thanks to those adult members of our community that has given so much to you. To the class of 2017, I have seen 16 classes graduate before you, but yours has a special place with me. So many accomplishments in the classroom, so many accomplishments on the fields of friendly strife, on stage, in service to the greater community in so many areas. But what I will remember you most for is your unity, your genuine friendship towards each other, what good mentors you have been to the underclassmen, for your outright kindness towards this community. But now it is time, it is time that you must leave us. As you drive down Christ School Road, for maybe perhaps hopefully not the last time, for a life beyond the Shell Station, remember that we shall always be here for you. When you are ready, come back, give back, we await your return. Perhaps Winston Churchill said it the best, this is not the beginning, this is not the end, this is not the beginning of the end, but it is the end of the beginning. If you take only one thing from your Christ School experience, let it be this. Part of your successes here has been the sum of your failures. Part of your success here has been you grasping at challenges when the outcomes are very much in doubt. This is what gave you confidence. This is what has made you strong. This is what will guide you in times of trials and tribulations. Gentlemen, be wary of the comfortable life, for it will teach you nothing. It will be those uncomfortable moments, those dilemmas, predicaments, and challenges that will make a man out of you. Treasure those times of unassuredness and mystery. And lastly, as St. Paul said to the Philippians, finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have learned and received for the things that you have heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be always with you. To the class of 2017, good luck, Godspeed, and be glorious during your watch. I made reference at the beginning of this ceremony to the tradition of ringing the bell um, as the way we begin commencement, but the way we end it is also a tradition, and I would ask everyone to please indulge us in one last uh, matter of business. The first thing that will happen uh, after the blessing is that the, the faculty will form a receiving line and graduates, alumni, 
If you would, please, greet those faculty who've shaped you these last years at Christ School, and then the celebration might continue. From the words of the school hymn, which we sing so frequently, words that are literally etched in stained glass in the chapel, but words which I hope and trust are etched in our hearts. To paraphrase, Christ be with you, Christ within you, Christ behind you, Christ before you, Christ beside you, Christ to win you, Christ to comfort and restore you, Christ beneath you, Christ above you, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all who love you, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thank you.